Okay, you've got it. You've got it, Jen, right? Okay, I do. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. All right. Well, thank you all for meeting us here. We've got um, quite a few of you in in here for, for this meeting, this webinar on the prototypes. Okay, so let me, let me share my screen with you so you see what I'm seeing. Uh, so the objective today is to, to basically ask questions about our prototypes, to, to get some direct feedback from uh, Grace Centers of Hope, but also to learn from each other and see where um, we had some great success and where we could do things a little bit better. Um, for the most part, Jen, Jen had mentioned that most of us are much further along than we, we had been in previous um, sessions. So that's really, really good and really um, uplifting for us. So um, I don't know if we're ready to start with the scientific method questions. Um, who's here from that section? Um. It might just be um, Wendy for right now. Okay, okay, that's fine. Um, and then the social studies. Side. Okay, so I know for fractions, it's myself and Willette is here. So maybe we can just start there. How's that sound? Okay. So Willette, hello. Hi there. Hi, everyone. Um, how are you doing? Doing um, great. So. Let's look at, that's the design plan. Let's check out the prototype. Open, okay, I'm gonna give you a very brief overview. Uh, would you like to give us a brief, brief overview of the, um, of the, the prototype? Sure, okay. uh, let's see. So the uh, math section is divided into um, three sections, or the math unit is divided into three sections. One is, uh, in section one, what we in, wanted to do was give an overview of the concept of fractions. Mm -hmm. uh, or it looks like it's four. Well, actually we're combining two and three into okay. multiplying and dividing. Um, but we may have changed it and I just don't remember. Uh, but um, so in the first one, we wanted to just give a brief overview of some of what a fraction is and some terms that the students or the learners would need to know, such as in the concepts that they would need to understand, such as improper fraction, uh, numerator, denominator, that sort of thing um, in unit in section one. And then uh, as we proceed through and here on, let's see, and as we proceed through this session, section two and three, um, moving beyond just um, sort of conceptual and just factual sort of knowledge and in, into actually how to multiply and divide fractions. Uh, one thing that I noted from the feedback is what is we need to work on the slides not being so text heavy and um, also uh, one thing that I noticed from the other groups sections is that there's a lot of um, resources in there links to additional practice and that sort of thing so as we move forward we'll endeavor to include those sorts of things uh, make it prettier that was a common uh, item that uh, came up in the feedback as well. So section uh, four there, adding and subtraction, subtracting fractions of last section. Uh, we chose to put multiplying and dividing first because uh, based on talks in the beginning uh, with, the, um, with everyone here, um, we, we received uh, information that it's easier for the students to understand the concept of multiplying and dividing uh, as opposed to adding and subtracting. So. Um, Adding and subtracting that unit, like multiplying and dividing, just uh, attempts to show students how to go through the process of adding and subtracting fractions. And um, what we uh, we definitely uh, need to have some ways to go here uh, to make this better in terms of, like I said earlier, more images and also uh, practice and assessment 
items as well. Um, one question that I had was about um, OER resources or open educational resources. Um, should we endeavor to make this a really uh, external resource heavy um, as we continue to make this as opposed to developing our own content? Or should we really focus on going out there and searching for resources, including practice items and assessments that already exist? Um, Kim and Courtney, do you want to take a, a crack at that? And especially, Courtney, based on especially what you said uh, about five minutes ago before we started, as far as the resources you found, have you found anything that may be helpful as far as practice um, activities and things like that, uh, rather than reinventing the wheel or other act, um, activities that may be helpful to this group? Mm -hmm. um, if you guys want to, I don't know, link to videos. I know there are a lot of free videos on Khan Academy and whatnot. That's fine. Um, I know there are um, lots of like online worksheets and things like that. And from my end, I don't know Kim, if you, you know, want to comment, but I think that's fine. If you want to use OERs, I have no problem with that. And um, Willette, were you um, able to find much when you were out? I, I know in the first group that we had, the first cohort, they went out and found a lot of resources. They were very K-12 focused. And so that was an issue that, you know, really didn't play to an adult audience. Um, but, in, you know, if you can get it where you can modify something that's already available and, you know, make it more adult <laughs> centric versus for students, that makes sense. But did you have any repositories that you were finding when you were putting things together? Uh, well, this is well, to Toilette. I have seen some videos and I watched some of the videos on Khan Academy um, in particular that related to um, multiplying and dividing fractions. And one thing that I came across though is that the video, in the uh, video, it covers some, it goes into a level of detail and covers some things that aren't necessarily covered in our unit. Uh, and the way it, that things are described, uh, it's a different, it's a different tone than what we have in our, our unit of instruction. So the issue would be, do we want to revise our we want to come in alignment with the way Khan Academy um, teaches in that level of detail or if we want to make something similar to what Khan Academy has. And given, given the time constraints though, I think it may be more efficient for us to uh, kind of align our teaching with what's on Khan Academy, but I'm open to thoughts on that. Um, there is another resource and I'm not as familiar with it. I think it's it's a YouTube um, channel. I think it's called Kolu Math, maybe. Um, and I, like I said, I'm not that fam familiar with it, but I know they do a lot of math videos too. I think it's K-O-L-U, Jason. I'm not sure. I think that's what it is. I've seen uh, just a little bit of it. Um, okay. So that might be something to look into too. Um, and there are some, I know, worksheets out there that um, are more geared towards children. Um, but I think I've seen some also that are not so much um, like CUDA software. They have some worksheets, um, mathdrills.com or .net. Those are some resources too that have some um, uh, options out there. Okay, great. Thank you. And you know, I'm going through your feedback, the, the feedback from, um, I believe it was Courtney that reviewed your unit and then the feedback of others. And you know, just kind of thinking big picture as far as where you need your, your work, focusing your time now. Um, I think you're mentioning videos, which to me is more of a presentation mode. Um, and this is probably a good time for Kim and Courtney to step in uh, thinking about their unit in particular. Um, do you, is it more in the, the issues of that need to be uh, revised is, is it more in the presentation area more in giving them opportunities for practice um, in general where do folks think we need to spend additional time for this unit and then if, I, I don't know if you noticed the aggregated feedback is also on the, the document that Jason's um, mm -hmm. linking here and Bonnie too, feel free to step in if you have any uh, thoughts on yeah. it I just now uh, looked up the Kolu math, and it's all one word, uh, Kolu, uh, anyways. Uh, but uh, um, I, my, a couple comments that I made, uh, uh, one of them had to do with uh, using as many real scenarios that you can make up, even when you are showing 
uh, of fractions or multiplying. So uh, I, from, for me, who is not a math person, and I had to take statistics to get my doctorate, and I mean, when they wrote numbers, but when that person explained something in real life, then I finally realized what it meant. And so I gave a couple of examples uh, in, the, in my feedback of how they, uh, you know, could actually even start with that, of how uh, you can use uh, fractions in everyday la life, you know, batting average, just lots of different things are uh, uh, fractions. Uh, and so when you have numbers on a page, I, I'm thinking in terms of people like me, okay, <laughs> is that uh, those numbers need to be illustrated by something. And that's why a couple of times they were, but sometimes it's just numbers. So I would say uh, almost every one of the problems needs to have an adult <clears throat> scenario uh, related to that so that you could see uh, how that applies to real real day, real life that that's again I'm I'm the kind of learner for math that needs it visualized not just numbers numbers don't help me unless it represents a fraction of a pie uh, you know fraction of a dollar those kinds of things okay and you know well you, you brought up a point and it's just a cautionary tale for anybody. The, it's great to have the avail availability of all these open educational resources, but exactly as you said, if it doesn't align with what your objectives are and what you're trying to work on in your unit, then I would not say to use it and then adjust your objectives. You know, it's almost like, you know, putting a, a square peg in a round hole or whatever. So if you find resources that align with something that you're trying to accomplish rather than reinventing the wheel, then use it. But to Bonnie's point, um, you know, I, I don't even think you need to get particularly elaborate on, you know, some of the, um, the the examples and things as far as needing to go out to a Khan Academy for, and, and in fact, some of the feedback we've saw in other units, there's, you know, if you send learners too far out and to send them out too often to find um, mm -hmm. other resources, you lose them. It's hard to get them back, you know, to your right. unit and, and you know, they're bouncing all over the internet. Um, mm -hmm. So it is kind of a fine, you know, fine line. You want to give them helpful information without, without losing them. Um, but I, you know, I, I would, my, my biggest recommendations specifically go back to what Bonnie, Bonnie's feedback and then Courtney's feedback on the, um, on the unit and, and look at the specific things that they were looking at. I think you're very much on the right track and we kind of ran into this with, um, the, the second unit over the weekend. Um, we're kind of at a stage, we don't need anybody to go out and reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. You know, we're right at the stage of. Um, tweaking what you what you're doing I think you're almost there and there is kind of that sense of panic like when you start getting feedback that's try this what about this <laughs> that mm -hmm. suddenly you kind of lose your focus and your game plan and I think you guys haven't you know from from the start of your design plan and to your first prototype I think you're very much on the right path and now it's a matter of backfilling where there are gaps and so that would be my biggest recommendation to this team as well as the others um, any thoughts on that, Kim, Courtney, or Bonnie? Um, and, and specifically, I think Kim and Bonnie, uh, maybe, it, I know we're jumping into, the, I'm jumping into comments that you had made over the weekend uh, for team two, but I think they might be applicable here as well in terms of a big picture, what, what we need to do from this point to be able to complete our deliverables in, the, in a matter of a few weeks. Right, right. I, 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 so then, I mean, my biggest uh, feedback is that every time numbers are presented uh, for for learners like me, even though I'm smart in a lot of other things, <laughs> some of it is that I need a picture of what those fractions represent. So they need to be translated in, you know, whether that's, uh, again, whether that's change or pizza or uh, <laughs> batting average or, or something that represents what happens in, in my real life. Because we do use fractions all the time. It's just that we don't call them fractions. We call them other things. We, you know, they're parts of a whole. And um, again, another soapbox issue of mine too. And again, just these are just things to to consider because we only have a few weeks left. Um, I know there's always this um, the rub between pretty and not pretty, and I kind of it's kind of a nails on a chalkboard for me <laughs> in general with instructional design because especially at a prototype stage, um, we aren't looking for pretty. You know, we we just aren't. We're really looking for quality um, instruction and, and giving people. Right great presentation options and, and great practice options. So um, please don't spend a lot of time going out and getting 
you know, to clip art or, you know. No, no, no actually, I'm going to Jennifer, to interrupt, I, I know I'm interrupting, but what I, I don't know if I use the word pretty, but the display needs to be, uh, there, there's a whole uh, study out there and research out there, I'm sure some of you are familiar with visual literacy, and that uh, something needs to be displayed on the screen so that it is, uh, you can read it real clearly. So let's, uh, uh, if, if the uh, text is sort of to one side and the illustration to the other or the text right underneath it but uh, so that you have a visual and and the visual has to be very clearly and very uh, related to the content so that's why clip art doesn't work uh, it has to be something that you're showing that's clearly related uh, and that's arrows and and putting the text maybe it with a, a background of, of light blue uh, and and the answer pop up in yellow or something to make it so that these things pop not just so that everything fades back into the background so that's that's how I would uh, explain not making it pretty making it visually uh, easier to read and to process one challenge is um is um, with with math how effective images can be so trying to balance getting that right image within the time constraints we have and you know keeping in mind that what you just said Jennifer about it being more about quality content but um, trying to balance it between not being too text heavy and also having those um, visual units that we know can be effective in teaching mathematics and so uh, that's um, and then uh, getting images uh, that are free to use and not running into copyright things and that's uh, why that kind of um, that image that's in there of the pizza is, is just something you know and then the, the measuring spoons just something the pizza was clip art and then the measuring spoons are just some measuring spoons at my house. So I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to balance this, you know, wanting to give them that visual, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's, it'll take time to, to search for that. Yeah. And, and as far as visuals and Bonnie is exact, you know, I'm sure a lot of us have had message design uh, mm -hmm. classes and things like that. Uh, it, you know, the goal the golden rule is if it makes sense to what you're trying to explain, use it. If it doesn't, don't. Um, so if it's just a, a cute little graphic of, you know, a couple people looking at each other, <laughs> it has nothing to do with what, no. but, um, but as you're saying, like if the, if you're trying to show fractions and you're using, you know, cupcakes or whatever it is, and that's your visual to count or, you know, show, show percentage, percentages or whatever it may be, then it's totally appropriate. And, and then you can use a fairly you know, straightforward graphic without getting too fancy with it. And then um, also with math, obviously, even just tables are helpful and um, things like that. So, um, um, are cartoons appropriate, you think, for an adult crowd? Is that okay if there's like a cartoonish image of a, of a baseball bat if I wanted to talk about, or if, if the team wanted to talk about uh, batting averages? Is that appropriate for the audience? Like cartoon images, cartoonish like things. I'll let Courtney and, and Kim feel that one. I think Courtney needs to respond to that. I think that's appropriate, Kim. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that. And, you yeah. know, I, I think that you can either include it or not. As soon as you say a batting average, I think that's everybody understands that. Or, you know, a whole pizza and you know, it's cut into eight pieces and you take two of them out. You know, what do you have left? I think, I think it's just all stuff that people uh, can relate to. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, to me, like a, a, a more relevant graphic for batting averages might be a list of five players, uh, made up pay, players or real players' names with actual, you know, times at bat and then batting average using a table, like Jennifer said, that that would be more uh, relevant and I know that that's sort of percentages but if you translate it into uh, that it becomes part of a whole if they're up ten times they batted they got a hit three of the times that they were up you know then uh, we have uh, three out of ten right. and so um, that that's now a a, uh, a fraction 
All right. Thank you. Yeah, right. And using a colored pie chart from, you know, an Excel yeah. spreadsheet or, something, or, you know, exactly. get out yeah. of Excel or something. Right. It's fine. Well, yeah. I did like um, what you did at the beginning with the what is a fraction and the squares and the cupcakes. I liked that. So yeah. that's that's good. I that agree. was um, that was um, Elaine's work. Yeah, she did a great job on that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Okay, we're gonna um, we're gonna move on. If we if there are some more questions, hopefully we can return to them at the end. I don't want to um, sh cut short someone else's time here. So we have <coughs> Alexa and Zai Huan. I, I'm hoping that you're in the same group. I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen and allow you to share your screen so that you can navigate through your own work. How's that sound? I'm not sure what group you're in. But, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're in the social group. Great. Okay, so I'm going to write notes here for you guys, and, and you can give us a brief overview of what it is that you're, you worked on, and then um, you can ask some questions afterwards. Yeah, um, we've actually have um, our um, um, prototype almost done. Um, if you have seen our PowerPoint, and we've got a lot of feedback from, I think it's from, uh, Bonnie and Kim. Yeah, Bonnie, Bonnie and Kim. And uh, so before I start, I do see um, you asked us to remove some of the videos and the articles that we are learners read, and just to give some uh, like three to five key points to kind of like summarize what we um, got them to view in those videos. Um, so my particular question is, because um, I'm not really familiar with American history. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so for me uh, to just identify those key points, I'm really uh, a little bit concerned like if I get get it right, uh, you see what I'm seeing. <laughs> sure. Um, are you so any place that we've said those three points, you're not sure what you would want to put in there? Yeah, I I, I think the the presidents are okay, but like for those bigger event, uh, historical events like um. For example, there's um, a U.S. Indian policy. Uh, when I did that part, I searched it uh, online, and there's a whole bunch of um, information about that part, and that's not specifically called like the U.S. Indian um, policy. There's like Indian wars or something. So I, for that, for example, I I had no idea how to just uh, um, summarize or just to take um, three to five points for that one. But, okay, um, I can send yeah. that to you. I'm sorry. I can, I can send those to you. Oh, oh that would be great. And uh, I'm not sure if Alexa has her other questions. Uh, my my questions were just related. Part, part part of my questions were related to what Zaiwan was uh, talking about in terms of uh, the key points uh, that you guys wanted us to hit. Um, and again, there's there's a lot of information out there. Um, so knowing which which is which, what you guys really want in terms of. Um, um, uh, slavery, um, uh, I think it was the, the other part that I had questions on was uh, re, uh, sections on reconstruction, because there was so much information, you know, I, I, my, my, my thing was, I would have ended up with at least 10 pages um, in the PowerPoint if I had not just kind of cut it down and then, you know, place links into my, you know, those sections that they can go back and read. Um, right, right. Yeah, so uh, that that was where my, um, you know, my, I wouldn't say frustration, but my trying to figure out 
um, what to put and what not to put okay. um, into it. Some of, some of it is answered by the question and answers that you gave. So um, most of them, if you had a section <coughs> that was followed by some question and answer that was not from a video, mm -hmm. I think those were, those were good key points to put in there. Um, okay. As far as specifics would you want me to summarize and send those to you on the where Bonnie and I said that I think that would be great because then you know I the, the whole point is that we make sure we have exactly what you guys are requesting right, right. um so this is not that that you know uh back and forth on you know hey you know this this is not really a key point or can okay. you change this to that so yeah, that, that I think that would be helpful. Okay. okay. First, Alexi, I, let me say how thoroughly uh, researched and uh, developed this was. This it was just over the top on how you guys did a terrific job on researching and and I I, I mean I went through this more than a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And everything was relevant. I mean, that I, I want you to be proud of that. That, that what, you. You, like, what you guys selected was relevant. I think what you heard from Kim and me in the feedback is that our students would not be able to process it in the amount of time that they have. Right. You know? Right. So, and so, I, what Kim and I then need to do is because uh, we did give you, I, I think they, it was shared with you that list of slides of e how yeah. each. Slide yeah. That we, we will take a look where we say key points, then we can make a determination because we did give some. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what you're wanting is every time we say that, uh, would you tell us what the key points are so you're, we're not guessing, correct? Right. right. Yeah, right. That, that is correct. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's I think, no problem. So, okay, Kim, we, we may, if you know, you let me know, Kim, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, I can meet with you and we can, we'll get that to you in the next couple of days. Oh, I appreciate thank you that. So thank much. you. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing that you, I, I want to just echo what, what Bonnie said, um, you guys just put an unbelievable amount Absolutely. of work into this. Very and good. All of the Very video good. links, all of the document links, um, I want to consolidate and put on a separate document should my students want more information because I think they were I, they were all good but you guys okay. went above and beyond what we could have expected so you should be very very proud of the work that you did okay. thank you thank you and, and I just want to also add to the, the comment, um, because I certainly don't want anybody to think that all this is going to go to the garbage or whatever, but no, as, no, as no. Bonnie and Kim uh, mentioned in their Word document, I, for those that haven't seen it, I just put it in the Google Doc. Um, mm -hmm. trust, trust me when I say that the, the part that we're saving, I think they were very specific on go up to this slide and you know, work on from here to here and we'll chunk it. All the remaining stuff will not go in the garbage. I, I swear. No. We will definitely be picking that up in a future cohort and um, and be working on that again. Right. Okay. Great. And um, I think that I think that's it for for us. I think the feedback that uh, was given was very detailed. So um, you know we know what we have to you know we have to revise in in our in our uh, prototype. Right. Um, and we also. Do have some like uh, specific questions? Um, oh, give me one second. So, um, we have those flag interactivities um, on like uh, each small sections. Yeah. Um, so, I just want to make sure. Um, do you want us to remove the interactivity? I think we uh, maybe some of them, um, like we, we made it like interactive, but maybe some others um, haven't have that um, function. So, um, do you want us to move that? You know, I'm I, Zara, I'm not sure what you're asking, Kim. Uh, 
are, are, you're asking to remove this flag? Is that what you're asking? No. Uh, no. Hey, this is Colleen. I can I can explain it a little bit better okay. if you want. Sorry. Oh, sure. oh, go ahead. Um, cool. uh, one of our concerns was we tried to make the lesson as interactive as possible, um, yeah. and one of because there were so many topics. I guess after right. we remove um, a lot of the topics, there won't be as many. But yeah. one of the things we were trying to do was give the learner control over their lesson so that they weren't clicking around and scrolling around and they had the ability to actually click in the flag um, on the civil rights if they wanted to review the civil rights section. And they could that would take them right to the civil rights. And the mm -hmm. feedback we got um, from you guys was to remove interactivity from that well, portion. It didn't work. I, we, I don't think we had it set up yet. Oh, okay. Well, so oh, okay. Yeah, that's that was the feedback is that we couldn't get it to work. We couldn't get it to okay. work. Okay. It's uh, I mean it because it, it, it said it worked and then I, I mean I tried different times. E each time it took us to the same thing. Yeah, we, I think we started it. setting them up and then we we never finished them because we were rushed at the end. Okay. But now, Kim, that's a question you need to ask or need to answer is that, is that okay that it's not linear if the student wants to click and go back? I mean, the key, uh, to me, it, it seems okay, uh, especially in, in a review process. But the key thing is they have to be able to get back and not lose their place. Um, you have to decide that. Kim. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're saying that they should be able to click on the flag to civil rights and just skip through the other slides right to civil rights? Um, that's, that, that's the intent, yes. No, I don't want them to be able to skip. Uh, ladies, let me uh, just let me tell you an experience I had a few years ago at a, at a, a seminar with, um, I, I forget if it was ISPI or if it was uh, the AECT, but a guy did research with uh, novice users and, and uh, uh, novice workers, and we were all, he showed us different things of, of which one of these would be the most effective with these novice learners. And we all liked the user control because that's what we were taught in constructivism and everything like that. And he had done several different <laughs> uh, experiments with uh, novice learners uh, and every one of them liked the linear approach. Now, I'm not, and, and none of us, you know, our doctoral students, I was a doctoral student at the time, none of us liked it. But he said, that's the one that worked and the one they liked. So I'm just, you know, uh, I can't tell you the name of the of the uh, guy. He was a you know a doctor of instructional technology. So that's all I can tell you. It was it was uh, an eye opening thing to me as well. <laughs> I like the way it is right now. I do not want them to be able to skip through things. Um, we do know that if they want to skip through things, they'll just keep pushing that down arrow anyway. Um, <laughs> if they think they know something, but I do want them to have to go through the whole entire thing. So I like it the way it is. The only thing that I could see that didn't work was there was a piece in the very beginning that said key historical documents, and that didn't go anywhere. That just skipped right to revolutionary and early republic periods. Um. I, I'm going to add one more thing to this is that if this because this is a wonderful graphic organizer I liked it at the beginning of every section it's it's yeah, really I did too. it's yeah. terrific graphic organizer because it puts it right in your head you know and then when you go to it you see it now if if somebody was really wanting to make this interactive this would be fine at the very very end where students have already gone through at a linear section you know and now which one of these do you want to review if you wanted to spend the time at the very end do you see what I mean? is that then they would be able to click on civil rights I, I'd like to see a little bit you know what I'm saying yeah we could definitely yeah. do something like that yeah but at the beginning with novice uh, and people who are struggling with trying to put content in a historical perspective uh, 
that would be uh, having it right at the beginning would cause more confusion for them. Mm, okay. You know, it, it just to also put a, a nice bow on this. Um, I talked to Paige a little bit offline on Saturday. Um, and I know your team has obviously put in so much work. And from my perspective, and I'm, this is what my perspective is, and I'd like Kim and uh, Tabani, they're the one that put the Word document together. But I think what they're saying is if you, you crop your unit to the slides they've mentioned, you go through their spreadsheet slide by slide and do the things they've requested, I think you're almost there. Uh, you know, I, yes. I, I, would not, I would certainly not devote any significant amount of time from here to the deliverable because no. I think you've done the work already. So the work is done already. Yes, absolutely. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. pulling those few things out. <laughs> so I, I would consider this more of a final edit, you know, versus um, any wholesale requests for big changes. So yeah, I hope now, that came through. Um, and I, I, my feedback, I did in that uh, that word document that we put together that that there are slides to be added at the end and while Kim said that she would like these uh, links on a word document I think that they're also they're very helpful to have at the very end called for further exploration and if you wanted to put those into categories and not wanted to it would be far better to say you know a uh, for further explanation, uh, exploration, then the Revolutionary War. So a category of links there. And then That's good, for, yeah. For each one of those. Therefore, at the very end, they can link if, I mean, because there are going to be some students, and, and I've met a, a couple, that these people have, have even had a college degree, but they got off, uh, you know, in a different direction, either through addiction or something. And so there are those atypical students, and they want to learn more. I was thoroughly, uh, I think I put in my feedback, I just enjoyed going through these things because uh, I, uh, I enjoyed learning about it. Uh, and there might be a couple who would be like that. Okay, Yvonne's yeah, got a couple of... like things. Thomas Jefferson was such a shady character until I <laughs> saw that video. <laughs> How you guys doing? Yvonne's got a couple of questions, and we have to get to the next, um, the next group. So, Yvonne? I'm here. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. So, um, thank you so much for you guys providing very, very extensive feedback. That's very, very helpful. Um, something that I did as the faculty advisor was actually go through um, both documents, the aggregated feedback and then the separate document, and as, as sort of a courtesy for the students, um, went through and some of the minor things about removing um, some of the information. I pulled all of that out, um, some of these links, and, and thank you for clarifying about having a Word document as well as the separate PowerPoint slide. I think that's, that's just yes. a, kind of a nice takeaway that, you know, a student can, can have at the end, hey, for further information, if I want to go study this, right. that's great. Um, a couple of additional questions that we had, one of them, let me pull up the slide. And, and this kind of went throughout, um, and it's a question about, um, I guess, citing sources and how do we want to handle that? So, for example, there's a lot of different images that are used um, throughout, which have been taken from a variety of sources. Are we, should we cite those somewhere? Um, I know one of the questions was that you want us to remove under each of the graphics um, kind of these where it comes from. So this particular photo of George Washington comes from history.com. Is that, do we need to document that somewhere or do you just, how do you want us to handle that? That's Fun. a great, that's a Fun great question. Feedback. <laughs> oh, I think I must have lost it. You know what, let's, that's a great, let's chew on that. Let's have like a, a, a thought on that. Cause I, I don't know, Fani, if we really thought, did we think that through too much on the template? I'm not sure where the thought process where it was to put that. I thought it was that in the style guide, it shouldn't have been underlined or something. I thought that's what Bonnie said. And so I think like what you're saying is that sufficient or do you want, or should there be more citations, right? Right. And I think we were, I, I don't know if Bonnie lost her audio. I think originally yeah, the thought process was we would rely on the links, kind of like you do on a blog post, <laughs> you know, that that would be sufficient. Um, yeah, let's let's circle back on that one and think that one through, and, and we'll 
let's leave it as it is right now and um, yeah. not go to any additional work. No, um, I don't think so. And then Bonnie and I can, can fix it. I, but I thought for some reason she said just don't underline it. Just so it has a hyperlink to take it, take you to where it was found. I don't, I don't know that we needed a hyperlink to it because it just goes to that picture. Um, I think the point was just cite from history.com. Okay. Photo from history.com or something. Great question though. Sorry. I, I wish I had an answer off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's all right. Um, and then this other one. So I, I had to go back and figure out. So with the European population of the Americas, which is obviously yeah. this crazy, we'll call it a module topic, whatever that I think there was some confusion in it. And I had to figure out where the confusion started and it actually went back to the design plan. So for every other major topic in history, um, within the design plan, it was very detailed about what is going to go under that. And this particular one, there was nothing under it. So I think that's where the confusion of where does this actually fall within the historical period of the U.S. Um, right. So we will go back and kind of make these tweaks. Um, is there, I guess, some more specific guidance about what should be included within this? Um, I think, you know, this is just about them understanding kind of that whole Ellis Island experience. You know, here is this, this great world that's, you know, going through all this industrialization and we have all these immigrants from the late 1800s to the early 1900s, you know, over like 23 million or 29 million of them coming from Eastern Europe. And that's how we kind of become this great melting pot in the United States that we are today. We have, because we have all these European immigrants coming over, you know, that's how we get our Asian population. That's how we get our, um, you know, that's how we get our Jewish population. It's just, I think it's just understanding. It's the students getting an understanding that we weren't all Native Americans. We came over, you know, we all immigrated from other countries and it happened during this big boom um, in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So just okay. as basic as that. Okay, sounds good. Um, I didn't have any additional questions. Anyone else from our team before they have to move on to the final team? No, I think I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. good too. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much. Team, we have about 10 minutes left here. Um, and what I noticed is um, Wendy is here, but I'm not sure if any of the designers are here. Um, and so, Wendy? Wendy, can you hear us? Yes, I certainly can. Yes, I, I, I'm, it's unfortunate that the teammates are unable to attend today. Okay. Ugh, goodness. <laughs> um, I did meet with a portion of the team this weekend for about an hour and reviewed. Um, we went over the feedback together, and they were going to get together before this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have the feedback from the outcome when they met. So. Okay. I, I don't feel like I'm going to have a lot to, to contribute to the discussion right. um, without, you know. Okay, so this was the science um, group, the scientific method. So I'll, I'll just ask, um, you know, Bonnie and Kim and Courtney, if there, are, if there are particular things or particular feedback that you can give them directly that we can note here that Wendy can uh, maintain um, to some extent that were imperative for this particular session section. Right. And they'll, and they'll watch the recording as well. So I think any, yeah, any feedback you can give us would be much appreciated. Um, they did go over everything in great detail and, um, and of course, you know, they knew that they had some work, some work ahead. So. Sure. Um, I think, um, Everything that all the feedback I had, I gave um, in that survey. Um, I think the two big things um, were with that step number six, the reporting your results, and they made it a good job explaining it. Um, but I don't think it was very well represented in some of the examples. Um, and so I kind of talked about that. And then um, I am drawing a blank on what my other piece of feedback was. 
Um, oh, it was about the worksheets that I gave Hannah um, at the beginning to kind of go along with this unit. Um, and it doesn't look like there's any link to them or they're included anywhere, which is okay. Um, but I, I don't think what was on the worksheets was included in here, so I don't know that they would go very well with it, which I don't didn't see them included anywhere. Um, so I think that should be fine. But um, overall, I think it, you, they did a very good job. Uh, I think that's those are the two main things that I had for them. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so are there, can we circle back around to anything that we might have missed then if there's, if there's nothing else for this section? First of all, is there anything else from this section that we want to speak to to give to Wendy or to write down in our notes here or to con converse and communicate to the other teammates? Designers. Oh, ooh. Okay. All right, so... Oh, there's, there's somebody. He's got a lot of noise there. All right. So if, if there's nothing, then we can circle back around. If there's any other uh, last-minute questions from any of the other units that would like to ask some questions to kind of finalize our, our thoughts here before I go into the closing remarks. Here. Hey, Jason, this is Kim. Just, you know, as questions come up, Right. Um, we're fine with people sending us questions. So, right. um, you know, whenever, whenever they have any. That's good, too. Sometimes it's good to hear for the good of the order, you know, these questions out loud and they're recorded in the space. So, okay, great. So uh, the individual reflections are due Monday, April 27th. And then the final prototypes will be due May 4th. And obviously before then, we're all going to hopefully be getting together. Um, with our facilitators and with our um, advisors to refine these uh, prototypes and obviously keep it in tight communication with Bonnie, Kim, and Courtney at Grace Centers of Hope. Um, so I think in that, I think that we can close. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, and if Jen, Jen, do you have anything else to add? No, that's great. Um, I all thank right. everybody. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for all being here. This is a great session. I appreciate it. And if any other contact needs to be made, we're all open and available. So. Thank all you. I'll right. take care. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.